Do you believe in the possibility of living your life by design in how you design it? Well, I believe that. And as a matter of fact, so does my oldest son that I just found out recently. So today I'm going to teach you exactly how you can begin to design your life and begin to implement. Let's go get that nugget of inspiration. Welcome to Life Mastery for Women. I'm your host, Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Join me here three times a week for empowering conversations, powerful tools, and techniques to help you experience more joy, healing, and deeper connections in your life. Get ready, ladies. It's time to get that nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. Life is hard, but your personal growth doesn't have to be. Hey ladies, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope I'm finding you living your life by design. If you're not living your life by design, then it is my intention that in today's episode, I give you just one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. So sorry about my raspy voice. I have a little bit of laryngitis and uh, it has actually been going on for, I don't know, I think we're getting pretty close to about six days now. It doesn't hurt or anything, but I hope you you find it a little bit sexy and not annoying, but my apologies. But I did want to touch base with you today and to give you some really good news. The good news is that, well, there's a couple pieces of good news, actually. One part of the good news is that I have a brilliant piece of teaching for you today that is going to teach you how to design your life and live it by your design. And the other piece of good news is that my eldest son, who is 28, came to visit me uh, just last weekend and is actually living his life this way. I was so excited to find out. He brought what he calls like his life purpose book. It's a very small notebook that he kept in his pocket and he has created, I forget what he called them, but basically his core values that he lives by. And then also a list of rules that as he goes about life, that he he adds these quote rules in his life that he loves and he writes them down in this book and he kind of promises himself that he will continue to point himself in the direction living by basically these guidelines that he has created for himself, the things that he values, the type of person he wants to become and really working on his character and how he shows up in the world. So I thought that was really exciting. I had a wonderful conversation and a fantastic visit with him and I found this to be just brilliant. I was really excited for him to have found some role models in his life. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, this is Bob. He is a son that, uh, well, he's my oldest son. And I adopted him back in 2012. And so he was 15 years old when he moved in and shortly turned 16. And he had two failed adoptions. And so far, I would like to say that it's been 11 years and we have a very successful adoption. Uh, I love him more than anything. He is he is a fantastic young man. He is recently married as of October last year. He married a lovely lady that we are so excited to welcome to the family. And um, he is really advancing. He's really creating a life. And uh, he's got some hurdles to get through like we all do. We always have the next level of things, the next stage of our life. And he's trying to work through some of those things. And But I just commend him about how he has brought himself up in a level and has uh, cleared some of the trauma. He has gone through a lot, a lot of trauma in his first, you know, 15 years of life. Some that um, I would, that is just wholly traumatic. But obviously, I'm not going to talk about that in today's episode. I kind of touch on a little bit of that throughout the podcast episodes. But um, yeah, he has he's come a long way. So what I want to do is I want to introduce you to a new way of thinking and a new way of approaching life that I call life's blueprint. And I love the word blueprint because it it, it fills me up with this kind of creative uh, space and creative energy. And I wanted to be an architect a long, long time ago when I was in high school. I really, really thought that I was going to make it as an architect. and But uh, obviously, it didn't turn out that way. And that was not my uh, purpose. So, but I do love the word blueprint. So we're going to use it. This is called life's blueprint. I'm going to give you basically the seven 
areas that I love to focus on in my own life and love to kind of see where I'm at, assess where I'm at, and and try to balance all seven of these categories. So if you haven't already, get out your journal, get out your notebook. I think you might want to take some notes. So life's blueprint, these are the categories, and then I'll go one by one and give just a quick overview of what I think that means and my definition of what each of those categories means. And then I'm just going to walk you through an assessment process that I love to use and maybe some tools. All right. So here are the categories and then I'll go through and define them. So the first one, and I think that these are in order of importance, your spiritual uh, practice area, your emotional, your physical, your intellectual, your financial, your relationships, and your career. And actually relationships and financial should be switched. So it should go intellectual, then relationships, then financial, then career. But you know what? This is your life blueprint. You can do it however you want. Those are the the orders that I like them in. Um, I kind of go from the biggest to the smallest. And sometimes when you work at the biggest level, they tend to wash through, so to speak, when you like... I I picture the spiritual and once I get the connection of spiritual, then everything else kind of falls into place. Like everything kind of manages itself and kind of puts itself into place. So I like to work on the biggest area first that helps to create the momentum for the other areas that follow. So now let's define them. So my, my spiritual area, my definition for me specifically is my connection to source energy. That is, could be for you, could be God, it could be your higher self. To me, it is just the greater energy, the more, like whatever, the, the energy that is all around us, that is, that is in us, that is in everything. It's when I say everything is energy and energy is everything, that's what I'm talking about. So to me, it's this creative energy that if I align with it, I can start to, I can start to create the life that I want to live. And I find it to be so brilliant that the the path and the journey to getting there is first to go within. But yet, what do we do? We go without. <laughs> we go without, and that's all in that's all encompassing. We go without, and we go without. We look around outside of us to help have those things try to create the life that we want to live. But we also go without. We go without the deep connections. We go without the connection to source. We go without the things, the life, the love, the joy that we want to experience. So we go without and we go without. Um, So going within, that is my spiritual connection, is meditative state in that silence, is going within, asking for guides, asking for, for guidance, messages, and support on my journey, and connecting with, I'm reading this new book, Um, I forget the whole title, but it's like consciously live your life. And it's a, he's a relatively new author. It's a giant book. And I just love that. But he talks about your original soul contract. And I do believe that. I do believe that, you know, with me in the spiritual realm, I created the contract that is to be my life. And I want to know what that contract is. I can't go out there to find it. I have to go within. So tapping into my intuition, my higher self, and connecting with source so I can be guided, so I can live out my purpose on this planet. So that is my definition of a spiritual connection. So I I encourage you and I invite you to define that for yourself. What does that mean to you? The next is emotional. This is the area of managing your emotions. To me, this is about not only trying to find a, a more consistent space or consistent consistency of happiness, but it really is about experiencing and exploring all of the emotions. So not just happiness. Like to me, that's like Pleasantville and that would be boring after a while that everything's the same. And so I I do experience a complete rainbow of emotions and some of them are unpleasant. You know, I, I get angry, I get overwhelmed, I feel chaos and those emotions don't always feel so amazing. However, they do have some wisdom. In my episode of How to Manage Your Emotions, I teach you about the wisdom that can be learned and honed from your emotional state, is asking yourself, what is in this emotion that I need to learn? 
And gaining that wisdom and insight is so valuable. So when I look at myself and I go, okay, hey, you know what? I'm feeling overwhelmed. What do I have to do? What do I have to learn? What's causing the overwhelm? I can clear energy and I can grow in that moment. I can transform. And that's what I'm about. The next one is physical. This is your physical human existence. How do you want to feel in your body? As I always hear and I've always said, it's like you get one body, it's your home. And without your body, you're homeless. And what are you going to do, right? You have one body, you might as well treat it right. Because right now in this moment, as you are listening to this podcast, your body is bringing it all together for you. It is bringing it in through the ears and in the canal and and interpreting the sound waves that are coming through the microphone and into your headset or through your speaker. And your brain is taking in what I'm saying. Your heart is beating. Blood is moving through your body. Food is being digested. You are sitting comfortably or driving and you are your body is maintaining all of this. So I'm going to take care of it. Because all of the things that my body does for me, I owe it that much, which means I'm going to feed it nutritious food, I'm going to give it exercise, I'm going to maintain my health and my physicality as best as I can, because it's taking care of me. It's keeping me alive right now. It's keeping me alive. So you decide what does your physical, what does that physical area look like for you? The next is intellectual. To me, intellectual is that mental stimulation, the joy of life, learning new things, expanding and seeking and connecting. It is about expanding. It's about expanding. And my spirit always wants to expand and experience and explore. Like those are my favorite words, right? And adventure. And when I'm taking in new information, it stimulates my intellect. So I want, you know, high school and college was not the only place of learning. Like I learn every day. I read every day. I listen to podcasts every day. I move my business forward every day. I learn new things all the time. I am constantly full of questions. And I encourage that for you is how do you stimulate that part of your, your, your life? How do you stimulate that? What do you do in learning new things? The next is relationships. Now, these are your earthly connections. So your spiritual is your connection to the ether, connection to source or God or the universe or your subconscious mind. It's your, it's your connection to the angels even, whatever it is for you. Your emotional, that to me is like maintaining your, your emotional state, but also managing those emotions when they do arise is not letting those emotions get the better of you. Your physical, of course, is enjoying being in your body. Your intellectual is stimulation. And your relationships are your earthly connections. That's your intimate relationships, but it's also your friendships, your family dynamics, your coworkers, your boss. It's all of how do I handle being on the planet with other people? And take take some time to define what those relationships are like. The next is your finances. Now, finances and career, I could say those two could go hand in hand, but I know people who are making a lot of money and hate their job. And I know a lot of people that don't make any money and love their job. What I'm encouraging is that you find a combination of both, where you love what you're doing, you get to use your skills, your talents, your interests, and you make the amount of money that you want so you can live the life that you want to live. So to me, they go hand in hand. And But I, I would say there's a lot of sacrifice out there where people, they go and get jobs just because they want the money or they go and get the money and they hate the job. So I'm going to encourage you to try to do both. But also define that. What does, what does money mean to you? What does it give you? Because nobody wants $100,000. They want what the $100,000 can give them. Does it give you power? Does it give you choice? Does it give you freedom? Does it give you security? What does it give you? And how much money do you need? That's another big question. Like there's questions in all of these, but, but and, and we do go over this in, in my uh, retreat, my life blueprint. I want to call it, this is a section, is a life blueprint. It's part of my healing retreat. And we do talk about this and we go a lot, lot deeper. So if this is something that you're interested in and working directly with me in a community of women where we can take this information and go deeper and begin to design our lives, then please send me an email the meditation room tc at gmail.com and say, hey, you know what, Jen? I want to go through this with you. My retreat is all about the first stages are healing and getting past the limiting beliefs and the trauma that is holding you back. So then you can begin to dream and design using my life blueprint, 
where we are going to go much, much deeper in this area and you are going to define each of these areas and then begin to take steps to building that. So when it comes to finances, how much money do you want to make? What kind of life do you want to live? How much freedom do you want? And with that freedom, what do you want to do? So figuring out what that number is, and the same as your career, is taking an assessment that allows you to understand fully what kind of person you are and what kind of things you love to do. If you're, if you're anywhere in your 40s or 50s or older, you probably know some of that already. Like you've done enough experience with your life that you just know that, you know what? Yes, I love that part of my job or I hate that part of my job. You're starting to sift through some of those things and truly understand who you are, what you like and what your skills and talents are. And if you don't know some of these things about yourself, I would encourage you to start taking some tests. I would encourage you to start taking some personality tests to truly understand and see what resonates with you. And as you're like handed handed the, the insight, this can really start sparking a lot of excitement in you because you might be thinking, you know, well, I just have to get a job. My, my parents raised me right to get a job and take care of my family. And so I do, but I hate every minute of it. Well, you know what? You might be meant for something greater and you might be meant for something different. And so I I would love to ignite that little stick of dynamite in there that allows you to get excited about your life and start creating your life from the inside out. So those are the seven and defining those. So I want to give you a little bit of homework and writing those down. The first thing is to define those for you. You don't have to use my definition. That's just how I personally define them. So I want you to define them for yourself. Give yourself a little bit of a definition, a couple sentences, a small paragraph, whatever that means the most to you when you look at that area. I would also encourage you not to take any or omit any of these because this is this is a pretty, I want to say it's not an extensive list. Like you could totally add other things in here if you wanted to, but I think this is a really core um, concept of these seven items, these seven areas. Now, once you've done the definitions, the next would be to rate yourself. Now, I like to rate myself on a larger scale is like a one to 10. So in my spirituality, what would I rate myself? Oh, I might give myself a seven in that. You know, I meditate several times a day. I, I read spiritual books. I really like, I try to be present. I try to, you know, to, to, to get deep. I connect with my intuition on a daily basis. That's part of my coaching program. It's part of who I am. It's part of a, a skill and a talent and an interest that I am honing and getting better and better at. So I do that every day. And so I want to encourage you to take take your time and rate yourself. Now, I have seen a couple of different ways to do this where you could do, you could rate yourself, you know, with stars of one to five, or you could rate yourself one to 10 or whatever. I like using a one to 10 because it gives me a lot of room for growth and expansion, but also gives me a lot of space to be able to say, yeah, you know, I, I could be a five here, but you know, I don't, you know what I mean? It just gives me, it just gives me a little bit more room versus a one to three. Um, and then defining it. Then from there, this is where life gets a little interesting. So what I would recommend, let's say your highest number was a five and all your other numbers were like ones and threes, that I would encourage you not to focus on the five, but to focus on the ones and threes and try to get all of these seven areas to blend together and be a five. Because if you put these in a wheel form, and you get to see this one's a one, so that's a big indent in the wheel and the circle, and then this one's a two, and that's a five, and this is a three. What I would encourage you to do is try to find balance between all of these, is try to get all of them to be the highest number of what your current state is. And I think that this is going to be quite an epiphany. The other is I would encourage you to take the lid off your dreaming and just say, you know what? I want to dream in this area. So try not to think about, yeah, I want a career that I love, but I've got kids to worry about and I've got a wife or a husband or I've, I, I'm have i single, I'm a single mother and it's like, I can't just, okay, I nothing's going to happen. Nobody's going to come in and make you quit your job, but I want you to start thinking outside the box. I want you to really start dreaming and visualizing of what this could be like for you, what your life could be like if you were to really hone in on all seven of these areas. Now, like I said, 
This is something that we do. And it's actually, if we're doing the structure that I want at our, at our women's retreat is to really hone in on this and to support each other. But at the same, at the same time, as limiting beliefs and negative self-talk and these blocks are going to surface for you, guess what we're going to do at the retreat? We're going to release those blocks. Now you're getting the obstacles and the hurdles out of your way. I'm so very excited. I hope you will join me. I hope that you could come around to being able to work with me. It would be so exciting for me. And I know that it would be life-changing for you. Thanks for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, I would love for you to like, subscribe, and leave a comment as to how this has inspired you. If you're interested in learning about our Lady Leaders Retreat and to join a community of women who connect, heal, and create a life that is full of joy, inspiration, and empowerment, then send me an email at themeditationroomtc at gmail.com. Subject line, let's talk. And I will set up a time for us to have a conversation. And in the meantime, keep going growing and transforming and keep looking for those nuggets of inspiration. Mm-hmm.